So with BPC, because I'd like to dig in on, on maybe some yeah. of the mechanisms, as maybe maybe like higher level science, because I think people have, I feel like people with peptides are a lot like the way my mom was with creatine. They're like, oh, they're steroids. It's like, no, mom, creatine is not no, steroids. No, no, no. Now, like, the, so could you just maybe on BPC specifically, like what is happening in the body when someone injects BPC-157? Okay, first you got to know we produce it naturally. There is a, a, a protein that is secreted by the gut, by, by the stomach, that's called BPC, a body protection compound, they called it. And when it breaks down, one of the fraction of the breakdown is BPC-157. The 1,5, that's because that's 15 amino acids. And the seven, if I recall well, I think it's the position it has, you know, like on, on the protein itself. So that's what they named it. So we, we produce it naturally, but in small dosages. And for many reasons, some people will produce even less, you know, the diet, everything. So uh, the Chemistry, the actual mechanism down to pathways and all that, it's not that well known. That's the funny part. It's a bit like uh, aspirin. I think it's in the last five years we found out how aspirin actually works in the cells. Uh, until then, if they would have wanted to put aspirin on the market five years ago, it would have been refused because they couldn't explain how it works, like the cell details. But what we know is that it accelerates repairs through different mechanisms. Angiogenesis, one thing that was found recently, and that's probably helped to uh, increase repair, is that, and that could be interesting for people taking uh, growth hormone secretagogue or straight up growth hormone, is that BPC-157 increased the receptivity of the growth hormone receptors. So for the same amount of growth hormone you would be taking, if you're taking a long BPC-157, you'll get a stronger effect from the growth hormone. So it, it is believed it's part of how it helps to heal because growth hormone uh, help uh, in the healing process. Uh, Plus, there are intracellular mechanisms that make the cell heal or the tissue. Uh, the, the exact details, right off the top of my head, I cannot tell you. But there now, is. You, 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 brought up a, <laughs> you brought up an interesting point, and I've been seeing this with what I've heard from you and what I've read in my own peptides, is the synergizing effect, effect of peptides has a seemingly like... It's seemingly unique oh. compared to other drugs. Can you kind of speak on the synergizing okay. effects and like how well, some type of drugs are run together? No, I think most of the time, time is in beta-4 and BPC, they're used together because they both do the same thing. They heal tissues, but through different pathways. And they have that synergetic effect. So when you use them together, it, you get that one plus one equal three effect. Now, uh, you see this, I, I've actually seen the compound you have that's that's multiple in one. Uh, I put, oh, I put Yeah, the one you saw, that, that's because, uh, that's for the liver. We have three of them in one. It doesn't have a name. It's only the amino acids. Uh, yeah, it's for the liver. So we decided to being, you know, fatty liver and all that, being good for the same thing. You say, hey. I don't know if they have this, probably they have a synergetic effect. So by you using the three together, of course, you'll get a much better effect than if you were using only one or two. It, uh, but you see that with pretty much everything. Uh, you know, for example, nowadays it's believed that you get a much better effect if you take, instead of taking two aspirins or two Tylenol, you take one of each. You're going to get a better effect. Uh, that, that. If you were to subcategorize by objective outcome at like health and longevity 
or tissue repair and muscle building and highlight like the main players in the peptide space under each of those categories. What are mainstays that people tend to reach to for the muscle building side, tissue repair? And then what are mainstays you find yourself prescribing or you know, recommending most often for um, you know, the longevity and health side? Well, what, what people reach out the most, muscle building and fat loss. <laughs> They, they all want the, the magic pill. But that and that's where peptides are not great at. Uh, if there was peptides that were really good to lose weight or fat, I would be amazingly lean. And if there were any to build muscle, I would be pretty muscular. So, eh. Uh, it's a bit that there are some. You have muscle growth factor, that's a splice of IGF one that we produce, so you can spike it if you take it at a certain time after training. Uh, you will. It's a cherry on the top, you know. Uh, you know the twenty eighty rule. So if you do. 20% of the work, you'll get 80% of the results. It, it works with training. And for most people, I know trainers don't like to hear that, but somebody could train twice a week for an hour and get, you know, if it's a father, three kids and all that, he's going to get pretty decent results, you know, going from nowhere to those two trainings a week. If they're well done, he's going he's gonna to get that 70, 80% results. Now, if he wants to go further than that and, reach 90, 100% if he decides to go compete in any sport, then he's going to have to put that extra 80% of effort to only get the 20% of results. So those peptides for muscle growth or fat loss, they're, they're very effective in that last part, you know, to, the, just to that little extra that is hard to get. But in muscle building fat loss, there is no, it all come, it comes down to the diet. Now you have a Zempic that came out, which is a peptide. Per se, it doesn't burn fat or anything, just cuts appetite. So you eat, it sees it. It's funny, I was talking about that last night at the dinner. It's basically by cutting appetite, it makes it easy to stick to a diet, but it's the diet that's going to make you lose the weight. The peptide helps you to stay in line with, with the diet, like, again, cutting appetite, slowing down motility so you feel full all the time. But uh, fat burning, no, it doesn't do much. Now, on the longevity side of things, because I, I want to circle back to Zempec because I think that's a really interesting okay, point. Okay, longevity, that's another story. Uh, there is a, a bunch of peptides, uh, we call them, they're called bioregulators. So the most well-known is epithalon. I'm sure you heard of it, discovered in Russia over 40 years ago. And they did uh, human studies on Russians six and like the, the the main ones there is one that lasted six years and the other one 12 years on people between 60 and 80 some years and what they found after 12 years is that mortality in the group of total peptides were decreased by 67 percent and they measure a dozen of uh, markers but at the time it was like uh, bone density muscle tone, uh, melatonin uh, levels in the blood and stuff like that. Pretty much everything was brought back to youthful levels, actually. And uh, so now, and thereafter, so epitalon is extracted, initially it was from the pineal gland. And then thereafter, they found that pretty much every organ in the body as one, two, sometimes three peptides that bioregulate those organs. So for the heart, we know of one, so it helps to regulate heart functions. 
Um, after that, they found that some of those peptides, okay, let's say the heart one, and then you find a study where they found it to be good for something else. So it, there seems to be cross actions to between those those peptides. Uh, and they're very, very potent because it's epigenetic at its core, meaning that the to, to be classified as a bioregulator, you need two, three, or four amino acids, five maybe. And they're small enough, their receptors, those ones we know, their receptors are not on the cell membrane, they are not on the nucleus membrane, they are not on the mitochondria membrane, no. They introduce themselves in the nucleus of the cell and introduce themselves within the DNA to modify the 3D configuration of the DNA in that position which increases the expression of uh, the genes in that area. So if it's the heart peptide, it will go in the DNA that will make the gene that is responsible for heart repair to be more active. And the nice part is they work, uh, well, there is a reason they call them regulators not bio and answer is they work like adaptogens with supplements. So if something is too high, it will bring it down. And if it's too low, it's going to bring it up to where it should be normally at youthful level. So it, you'll get that youthful activity of those genes uh, under the influence of those. Uh, 